Hello everyone and welcome back to my playthrough of Alan Wake 2. Last time we found the record in the museum of the old uh, the gods of Asgard. I put it in the jukebox and opened the way to the overlap where we finally fought Cynthia Weaver and managed to rescue Tor. Let's see what he has to say. We need to talk. <sighs> Damn right. Lots for me to explain, but not here. The knight's got ears. We can have our talk in your head. You have a room there, right? How do you know about that? I'm your grandfather. <laughs> what don't I know? Fair enough. All right, the mind palace. My mind place? How is that possible? We all have the power. Find the truth. Pass this bullshit horror story. Us Andersons aren't bound by it. You can fight it. Don't be the story. Make the story. It's true. I am a seer. I have power. My mind place is more than I thought it was. This isn't my intuition. I'm seeing their thoughts. Is this why I know the truth about Logan? While everyone else forgot? Um, wow, that's a lot of stuff that just got unlocked. Alright, you know what, guys? Um, I'm gonna be right back. Uh, cause I seem to be having the same problems as last time. Uh, I'm gonna see what I can do to try and fix it. Okay, so, I'm very sorry guys, I think I figured out what the problem was, and we're gonna try this again, hopefully everything will be better. We need to talk. <sighs> Damn right. Lots for me to explain, but not here. The knight's got ears. We can have our talk in your head. You have a room there, right? How do you know about that? I'm your grandfather. <laughs> what don't I know? There we go. Much better. You know about my mind place? How is that possible? We all have the power. Find the truth. Damn right I do. Odin already told you you're a seer. You can gaze into their heads, see the truth. See past the lies. Past this bullshit horror story. Us Andersons aren't bound by it. You can fight it. Don't be the story. Make the story. It's true. I am a seer. I have a power. My mind place is more than I thought it was. This isn't my intuition. I'm seeing their thoughts. I mean, are you just realizing is this why that I know now? The truth about Logan. While well, everyone else forgot. Okay. Are you really just piecing this together now, Saga? Like, how many times have you been profiling someone, getting into their heads? hearing what they're saying and you know coming up with shit like intuition like come on you can't be this dumb it's obvious you got some kind of like magic power you said you were my grandfather if that's true why wasn't I told about you you were part of our fucked up family way before this horror story I was a shitty fucking dad to Freya. 
Your mom didn't deserve that. Not one bit. Things were said and done. Not a day goes by I haven't regretted it. But that fucking father of yours didn't make things any easier. I know Freya is gone. So I need to apologize to you. I am sorry, Saga. I can see he's sorry. Mom said she didn't want anything to do with my grandfather. And that my father died before I could remember. It all matches. Tor and Odin are part of my family. I thought the mom was still alive because we saw the card in her mind palace. Like, we saw the card over here. Oh no, but I think she said it feels like mom is still with us. Right, right, right. Okay. Alright. My mom. You said you were a shitty father to my mom. Is that why she left? Freya never looked back. My girl was strong. Freya always thought our powers had a dangerous side. Odin and me did fuck with things that should not have been fucked with. Your mom had common sense. She raised you right. Kept you safe. I'm not surprised she didn't tell you about the absent power. She was always protecting me. Whenever I told my mom about my mind place, she called it make-believe. I wish she'd been more honest with me. At least towards the end. Mom wouldn't talk about my father. You knew him? Some doors are better left closed. Your dad was a complicated bastard. Always thinking too many steps ahead. That's not how we work. There was trouble, and then he was gone. I didn't handle it well. Freya didn't want anything to do with me after that. I can't blame her. I never knew my dad or my mom's family. So many broken relationships in my past. I won't lose mine. With Logan. With David. I won't stop until they're safe. If her dad ends up being something like Thomas Zane or like the actual Alex Casey or something, like, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind. I have the clicker. Can I use it to save my daughter? And am. Get your guitar roaring and your drums crashing. Blow reality's eardrums. Just the light switch isn't enough. It's Tom's story we're dealing with. So he's got to be the one to rewrite it. After that's done, he can flick that switch to bring the whole thing home, baby. I can't use the clicker without Wake. Tom. Meaning Wake. He needs to rewrite the story first. I can't stop the horror story without him. Wait a minute. I just had a fucking epiphany. I don't know if it's true or not. What if the father, what if Saga's father is, um, what was his name? The, the director from Control, the one who shot himself. Because he mentioned something about his family. I vaguely remember him saying something about, like, he fucked up his family life with, like, with his wife and daughter. I vaguely remember something like that. I'll have to rewatch my control video for that. If I remember correctly, it was around the area where, like, uh, the P6 and P7, like, rooms were, where, like, it had that twisted hallway. There was a document there that said something about 
Trench. Zachariah Trench, that was his name. What if Director Trench is Saga's father? And that's why he was a complicated bastard. That'd be crazy. That'd be fucking crazy. Look at all this stuff. Balance these. Are these songs? Yeah, they are. Okay. I don't want to play any songs. Uh, there was more. Oh. Okay. Cases. What do we got? Alright, the story. Does it finally open up? Well, we got some. Okay, so an area run and overlap is always flooded. I mean, yeah. It really, it took three overlaps for you to realize this. Does the overlap cause the flooding? Yeah. I entered the dark place by playing Torin Odin's song. Oh, excuse me. Overlaps require pieces of art to enter. Is so, that because of the dark place's focus on art? A song about remorse, a float about murder, a poem about terror. I'm seeing a pattern. All artistic works tied to dark events. That's actually true. I didn't realize that. And the Anderson family is immune to the effects of the story because of a hereditary power. Will my memories change? Yeah. The story doesn't affect me like it does other people. Because of who I am. Because of my family. So it can't change my memories, but I'm still affected by its events. So because Wake wrote the story, only Wake can edit it. Wake needs to be the one to rewrite the ending. And I'll need to keep an eye on him. But that's not entirely true. Because in the first game, Tom wrote the story of the game, basically. But Alan was able to rewrite the ending so he could save Alice. The clicker acts like an amplifier. It can magnify the reality-changing effects of art. <clears throat> so, Wake writes a story. The dark place makes it change reality, and the clicker amplifies that change, making it permanent. Makes sense. Is that really how it goes, though? The dark place makes it change reality. The clicker amplifies that change, making So fact versus fiction. What do we got? We got a lot of stuff. Okay, the mind... Uh, let's go in order here. Tor and my father had problems. There was trouble. Freya took me away after that. I guess I'm here. Yeah. Was Tor the reason my father left? It sure sounds like it. Mom thought Tor's power was dangerous. Didn't want me around it. Mom called the Mind Palace make-believe. She didn't want me knowing about the Anderson powers. All Andersons have powers. Mom never told me about them because she thought they were dangerous. Wanted me to have a normal life. No. They can communicate with me uh, here because they have something similar. Because we're family. Poor Noden understand the true nature of the Mind Palace. <laughs> I thought would be there. That should be here. No? Oh, connection to Tor and Odin, I guess. Yeah. They know more about the Mind Palace than I do. They know me. The Mind Palace is the cemental technique. It lets me inside people's heads see the truth. Be connecting. Yeah. Tor and Odin can actually speak with me in my mind place. Thanks to their own powers. So I'm a seer. I can see into people's heads. Torn Odin aware of the Mind Palace because they have powers too. Our family is not bound by Wake's story. The Andersons can see through the horror story. Tor and Odin are my relatives. The evidence fits with what I know is true. 
It's a lot to process. It is. Anger's remorse mentions the man I drove away. The way Tor behaved? I'm surprised my mom hung around for as long as she did. But he is genuinely sorry. So Tor is not a good dad. Reckless. Pushing my father away was the last straw for mom. Okay. Case closed. So we'll do the overlap first. Tor is here in the overlap. Gotta find him and get the fuck out. Then case closed. Wake wrote Logan into the story. He had no right to use her like this. There is still time to make him fix it. I won't give him a choice. So what does it say? Tor is here somewhere. I rescued Tor Anderson, my grandfather from the dark place. Wake fucking wrote Logan into the story. She's in danger because of him. Within Scratch's reach. I need Wake to write an ending that will save her. Why did Wake write Logan into the story? Like, that's a really good question. Thanks for telling me this, Tor. I need to go find Wake. To stop this. The old gods of Asgard will be ready to help. Me and my bro will bring the rock when you need it. Remember, your daughter is alive. Just kept from you by this bullshit horror story. I needed to hear that. Thanks, Grandpa. Don't worry about me, kiddo. I'll drag my sorry ass over to Odin. A few shots of the Anderson's finest will fix us both up. See you soon, Saga. The FBC is holding Wake at the Sheriff's Station. I need to make Agent Estevez understand. They have Wake and I have the Clicker. We have to work together to stop this. So Brian Casey, do you read me, Casey? I completely forgot about him. Where are you, Casey? He better be okay. Focus, Saga. Get to the station, to Wake. You guys okay? Hitting as usual? Where's Rose? I see Rose. Norman, put some clothes on. What if that towel slipped? No one wants to see your meat basket. Not until I've got more on it. <laughs> your meat basket. This guy back in his room? Yeah, he is. Pat. Good, Pat? Yeah, alright. Odin. Good. Good grand uncle? Grunkle? Grunkle Odin. Ati? Still there? Oh, Ati's not here. Can we open this? Still cannot open this room. Let's get the F out of here. And actually, if I remember correctly, I got a long way to go. This area should be clear now. 
going to check real quick, see if anyone's in here. Oh, I almost missed that. Cynthia's lamp. When Cynthia Weaver was downstairs at breakfast, Rose snuck into her room. With all the lamps in the room, it took her a while to find the one with an angel. Luckily, the dream Alan had sent her had been very clear. Rose was certain that Cynthia would not miss one lamp. She had so many. Tonight, Rose would put the lamp in a shoebox and let it sink into the garden pond. That's, what Alan wanted. That's how she could help him. The thought made her whole body buzz with joy. Cynthia knew the lamp was missing the very moment she came back to her room. She was overcome by grief. It had been Tom's lamp, one of the few things that reminded her of him. It had not worked in a long time with the cord severed and the light switch gone. But there are other kinds of lights than the ones we can see. The invisible light of the angel lamp had held Cynthia together all these years. With tears welling in her eyes, she didn't see the shadows shifting in the corners of her room. It's really sad. They caused Cynthia to to be possessed. She was the goddamn reason. Or Alan. Sorry, it was the whole reason. Alright. So, if I remember correctly, there was a whole flooded area um, that we weren't able to get through. That we should now have access to. Let's take a look here. Um, what is that? Oh! A manuscript page. Look right here. Ah, so there is. Saga had slid into a nightmare. A growing amount of evidence said her daughter was dead. Saga couldn't accept that. Wake said it could be undone. But Wake was gone, in the custody of the Federal Bureau of Control. Casey, her only ally, was gone too. She was alone. Agent Estevez had pulled rank on her, stonewalled her, shut her out of her own case. Saga refused to give up. She needed answers. Tor and Odin Anderson would have some. A family visit then. No one could blame her for that. Saga was trapped in a horror story. It was manifesting itself around her like the darkness of a mental illness, pushing her deeper and deeper. So, going down. Oh, is there another exit that way? Fuck, did I miss it? Sorry, guys, hang on. Another manuscript page. Oh, how Odin loses an eye. It's 1988, a face-off between deities on the rim of Cauldron Lake, high above its dark waters. Thunder roared, the old gods facing something even more powerful, something harder to define even, or changing the perspective, raving lunatics all caught up in the frenzy of a shared delusion. The old gods, the corsairs of the Sea of Night, and the Dark One who yearned to stand in between, who had always stood in between, who would soon stand in between. We help you, you stay away from our family, Tor Anderson snarled over the thunder. Yes, until you all come to me, came the answer. That's never gonna happen, shouted Odin. I will take this as collateral, shall you remember our deal, said the Dark One. Blood arched from Odin's face as he fell to his knees. Lightning hit the dark figure on the cliff, 
And with that, he was gone. Tor rushed to his brother. Are you all right, bro? Effectively blind in that moment, the eye patch covering his left eye, his hand over the now empty socket of his right, blood oozing out of it. Odin cursed. The bastard took the wrong eye. Yeah. I noticed that. Because Odin, like uh, Thor's father, Odin, like of the actual Asgard, his left eye is gone. He has his right eye. But in this game, it's the other way around. He's got his uh, right eye missing, and he's got his left eye. Okay. So we are able to go this way. Okay, that way I don't have to make a roundabout twice. Good words. Um, I don't really have a lot of bullets. I'll take the crossbow. And I should probably heal. Oh. What is that? Oh, it's an arrow. box I mean technically the bolt cutter should work okay This tree here. Was it here? No. I get up there. Not get up there. So let's, where does this face? I have no idea where that face is. This way. Many places to hide. Ah, Fuck. 
me. See, there's two sets. Am I supposed to follow these? Son of a bitch. Now, where was it behind here? Can't hide from the trees. We are everywhere. That's one down. Anything over on this side? Got my own nursing home. Up next, we have um, we had a guest lined up. But I have it written down here somewhere. What's this say? Jim Figamore. Figamore? F Figamore. I know that name from somewhere, but... Oh, the lion's lighting up, so that could be him. Hello, you're on with Pat Main. Hey, it's Terry. I'm at the Elderwood Palace Lodge, and there's been a shootout. FBI everywhere. I think somebody's... dead. I was working the front desk when bullets just started flying. I had to hide under my desk. Oh, gosh, Terry. <laughs> Clearly a bit of embellishment on your part. But it sounds like maybe Russ Hammond's been hunting quail in the off-season again. Quail? You're not listening. They shut up the whole damn hotel. And that's not all. I swear to sweet Jesus Murphy, I saw Alan Wake walk in before it all happened. Alan Wake. Now, is that one of Mandy May's kids? Alan fucking Wake, Pat, the writer. You've talked about him on the show. He disappeared years ago. Disappeared, you say? Okay, this is all coming together now. See, people were calling in about Wendy Davis going missing, but it sounds like they have her confused with this Alan Walker fellow you're talking about. Terry. You were there last Sunday uh, at the market selling those cuckoo clocks when I came to visit, remember? Pat, no. And who was selling beef jerky in that stall next to yours? Wendy Davis. Davis family beef jerky. Now, how can she be selling me beef jerky on Sunday and be missing since 2010? It's ridiculous. Wendy's fucking dead. I'm talking about Alan Wake, Jesus, Pat. This is serious. I'm trying to put the warning out. There's something wild going on. I gotta go in case they come back. Okay, that was uh, Jim Figamore, everybody. And <laughs> he'll be running for mayor this... Uh, wait, no, that was... Uh, that was... Uh, anyway, that's our show for today. How did he keep getting this guy on the air? Rose at Bingo Night. This ought to be good. Every night was Bingo Night at the Valhalla Nursing Home. Each time Rose drew a ball from the cage and called out its number, some of the residents shouted bingo, no matter what was on their cards. Some of them sat mute, their cards full, never calling out. Some of them would try to steal the ball from her. Some of them would chastise the others for acting out. It was like herding a clouder of cats. Rose didn't mind. She liked cats. She knew she was where she was supposed to be, with her little Vikings waiting for the hero to come. Tonight, the residents were restless, more so than usual. Ati was wearing Blum's coveralls again. Tor stood by the phone. Too late. Rose saw the hammer in his hand. The garden lights started to flicker. 
The darkness and rain pressing against the windows. The time drew nigh. Oh, those guys. Let's see if we can avoid these guys. Like we are avoiding them. Good, good fucking riddance. Um, where are we? Rocket flare, rocket flare, Hit flare. Uh, okay. Jumping down. How was all this flooded? Like, look how... Look how low that water is. Like, it had to rise, like, hundreds of... Probably, like, a good hundred feet. More than that, probably. That's, like, not even flooding, man. That's, like, monsoon, like, level flooding. There be a cabin right here. Can we get in? Another manuscript page. Right, false. The 81st annual Deer Fest was just around the corner. Everyone in Bright Falls was bustling. There were banners to be hung, pies baked, deer masks sold. Bright Falls had made the top 100 American small town lists for its modest rustic charm. The town expected a lot of tourists this year, but a shadow hung over the Deer Fest preparations. The forecast promised rain. Fearful whispers promised more murders. The police were on high alert. Sheriff Breaker had deputies patrolling the streets at night. Bright Falls was no stranger to odd happenings. But to cancel Deerfest? Out of the question. The townsfolk were anxious. Their anticipation mixed with fear. People had restless dreams. The lights seemed dimmer. Floodwater pressed in on the town. And the shadows poured in with it. Okay, let's keep going here. Another locked box. There's another cult stash. So light. And of course, three different symbols. Oh, come on. 
Oh, come on, guys. I dodged. I promise you I dodged. So we got the these double ones here. The elevator buttons put sideways. Uh, and something here? I don't know. Two together. Another locked box. There's another cult stash. Should I just guess this one? So there's one. Okay, I guessed it. Flashbangs. Wait, what did that say? We just got word that the feds have Alwick in custody. He came out of the lake. He's dangerous. Everyone be on high alert. We can take the writer out. Spread the word. One more occult stash to go. Then a ranger station. Uh, I guess we'll go down this way. So the cult stash, if I go this way. See it? I'm guessing that's the ranger station. It's a cold stash down here. Definitely seen like a good place to hide it. One back out of all that. That sucks. There it is. Another one of those cult boxes. What the fuck is this? The fuck am I even looking at? Oh, there we go. Chimney?
of course I can't get in here. Oh. So the town is right there. Can't be opened on this side. Of course it can't. Got another one of these. Oh. I don't know how I was meant to find that without sheer dumb fucking luck. But I will take it. Oh, it's stash key. Took me forever to figure out that the hint wasn't Santa's butt. Why are we making this so complicated? Just give us normal fucking keys. I love when the game is obvious, is like meta. Like it's self aware. about the ranger station. Ooh, what's this? And that boat just popped out of Another nowhere. Rhyme. Oh, well, that's lovely. Okay. To the beach, a child went wandering. Pretty shiny rocks she's gathering. But from the water, a monster rose. A horrible beast with a pointy nose. A flapping wing and dragging toes. But the child was wrong. It was her mother all along. On a boat grabbing a towel. That's already gone. Okay, so the beach. So maybe child. And mother is here. Maybe the monster's supposed to go here. Maybe the trickster. Oh. Is that all right? Keep trying. Okay, so I'm doing something wrong. Horrible beast with a pointy nose. A flapping wing and dragging toes. Bro? Oh okay, yeah, I'm missing I'm missing a piece. And honestly, something tells me it's in that house. But this also means that there's a thing nearby. A lunchbox.
Oh. There it is. Monster doll. Oops. So, monster, child, and mother. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. Fuck right off. Are you fucking kidding me? Another charm. This one better be fucking worth it. I mean, sure. Tax stagger and use more often. Increase quality and quantity of resources found. I guess I can get rid of this one. I'm going to do something I normally wouldn't do. Um, I'm going to see... I'm going to check online and see where the key to this ranger house is. If it's something that I need to come back to later, then fine. But I don't want to have to come back here later if I don't need to. Okay, you know what? Uh, I should have figured this out a while ago, but it has been a while since, uh, since I had to do it. You can use a screwdriver. I 
I'm actually glad I checked because I would have completely not realized that. More of those rhymes. Let's set this one now. A child needs their mother to keep them safe and a home as their hiding place. Because outside the monsters roam and chase. But they ring your doorbell, don't yell, don't tell them to go away. Give them treats and pray. They won't rock your house to the ground. Down to the ground. Okay, so child. I guess home. And mother. No. And that one. Makes sense. A charm. Perfect for my bracelet. What's this one? Saves you from death, but shatters in the process. Cool. Hi there, little friend. It has come to my attention, okay, from Dr. Campbell to Michaels Vega, or Vega and Michaels. It has come to my attention that both of you have, that both of you have left your posts on several occasions while on duty to gallivant around town on personal business. This is unacceptable. You are under strict FBC protocols regarding covertness and confidentiality. And as your supervisor, I'm responsible for your conduct at all times. If you find the work boring, too bad. You are to fulfill your roles and duties as I see fit and as the project requires. I'm changing your posts. I'll be overseeing the watery area as it is now the most test sites to cover. The ranger cabin there will be my base of operations. Vega, you are moving to Cauldron Lake's Witchfinder Station. Michaels, you are staying in the Bright Falls Station. I don't want to hear any excuses, but I do need you to acknowledge these orders. Okay. Dr. Campbell, acknowledge and understood. That goes for the both of us, Michaels and me. It really was not gallivanting, as you put it, though, as I was attacked by some rabid animal out there in the woods, and Michael helped me get medical attention in town. You should all know that if you... You should know all that if you read your messages, of course. In any case, order is received. Right. So that should be everything out here. Yep. And I'm going to help slash. Yep. Okay. I'm going to, I guess, jump ahead. Um, to the to the next save point unless something happens
Oh, that happened. See me. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. It's already running very long. Um, yeah, I'm really kind of hoping this is the last of the overlap areas. I think it is. Um, I don't really know who else we could be fighting. I mean, we're, we're going to be meeting up with Alan and the FPC sooner than later. Uh, well, very soon, actually, in the next episode. But, um, I'm, I'm not really sure where the story's going. I really wonder if we get to see Jesse. Or at least hear her voice or something, you know. But we will have to wait for the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.